This video is called Penalties for Commonwealth Offences. Now, there are a range of Commonwealth offences. They range from minor tax offences, minor offences under the Customs Act, all the way through to serious criminal charges under the Criminal Code Act. Now, I'm going to talk about seven categories of penalties for Commonwealth offences today. The first is called a Section 19 capital B discharge. What that means is that you're guilty of an offence under the Commonwealth legislation, but the judge or the magistrate does not impose a criminal conviction against you. So it's the best result for an offence under the Commonwealth legislation if you are pleading guilty. Now, the things that a magistrate or judge will consider when deciding whether or not to exercise their discretion to give you a Section 19B dismissal or discharge are your character, so whether you're a person of good character, your criminal record if you have any, your age, any mental conditions or anything of that sort. That's the first uh, category of thing that they'll consider. The second is whether the offence is trivial in nature. So if it's a less serious offence, there's a greater likelihood that you will be dealt with under Section 19 capital B and also any extenuating circumstances. So any reasons why you committed the offence. So not justifications, but any substantial reasons why you were put in a position where the offence was committed. So extenuating circumstances. Now there are two parts to Section 19 19 capital B. The first is a section 19 uh, B dismissal, so a straight dismissal without any type of bond, and that's the best possible result. The second is a discharge upon entering what's called a recognizance. So it's like a good behavior bond. So that means that you know you will be dealt with under section 19 B without a conviction, but there will be a bond in place for six months, 12 months, two years, whatever the case may be. And you must be of good behavior, of course, for the duration of the bonds. The best thing about section 19 capital B, of course, is that there is no criminal conviction. So if someone were to ask you whether you have any criminal convictions, then you could say no if the only uh, matter that you had was the one dealt with under section 19 capital B. That's the first category. The second category of penalty that I'd like to talk about are called fines. And that's really self-explanatory. It's a monetary amount that's been ordered against you, which you have to pay. And a fine can be $500, $1,000, $5,000, whatever it might be. Normally you have 28 days within which to pay a fine. However, you can approach the court registry or office and ask for an extension of time to pay or to pay by installments. Now, in assessing the amounts that a fine will be, the magistrate or judge will take into account the maximum fine applicable to the offence and also a person's financial circumstances. So if the maximum fine is quite low and your personal circumstances are bad in terms of your finances, then you're likely to get a lower fine. The third category of penalty I'd like to talk about are called Recognizance Release Orders or RROs. They're similar to good behaviour bonds in the state legislation. Now, three types of RROs I want to talk about today are firstly, recognizance release orders under Section 21A, and they're like straight good behaviour bonds. They can last for up to five years. Now, any breach of that order can mean that you're brought back to the court and resentenced for the offence for which you got the RRO, and it can be an aggravating feature of any further offence. Now, these RROs, as I said, can last for up to five years, and also the magistrate or judge can order that you pay restitution or reparations. So you pay money for the damage done by your criminal offence. The second category I'd like to talk about are called RROs under Section 21B. And they're like the suspended sentences in the state legislation. What that means is that you're sentenced to a term of imprisonment, for example, a year, but you don't go to prison as long as you sign the recognizance release order. So you'll be let out of the court that very day. You won't serve any time in jail. But if you breach it, you'll be brought back to the court and there's a high likelihood that you will go to jail for your offence. Now, the third category I want to talk about uh, also RROs under Section 21B, and these aren't available in the state legislation. What they are, are a type of parole system. It means that you spend a certain time in jail, that is, for example, you spend a month in jail, and then you're released from jail on parole. What that means is you can go home and you can go about your business, but you're supervised for a particular period of time, for example, six months. But 
there is only a certain amount of time in prison, like I said, a month or two months or whatever it might be, and then you're released. Again, that's not available in the state legislation. Section 20, capital A, capital B of the Commonwealth Crimes Act says that penalties can be imposed for Commonwealth offences that correspond with the offences of a particular state. The section is very important because what it means is that penalties such as community service orders, intensive correction orders, home detention can be imposed in Commonwealth offences even though they're not specifically referred to in the Commonwealth Crimes Act. Because there is section 20 capital A capital B, uh, community service orders can be imposed for Commonwealth offences. Community service orders are orders that a person undertake unpaid work of up to 500 hours over a 12 month period. So for example, if you have a day job, you work nine to five Monday to Friday, you can complete community service orders over several weekends. The fifth category of penalty are called intensive correction orders or ICOs. Now an ICO means that you're sentenced to a term of imprisonment, for example 12 months, but you don't go to jail as long as you comply with the terms of the ICO. Now the terms of the ICO will include 32 hours of community service work per month, so unpaid work every month. They will also include a range of other conditions, for example you may be drug or alcohol tested, you may have to attend required rehabilitation programs during the term of your ICO. You may have to have face-to-face -face contact with an officer from the Department of Corrections on a fortnightly basis, a monthly basis, or whatever it might be. In some cases, you may have to wear an anklet, so something that monitors where you are and where you go for the duration of the ICO. But an ICO is an alternative to imprisonment, and of course, it's far better than getting full-time prison custody. The sixth category of penalties is called home detention, and it essentially means that you have to stay at home for the duration of the order, subject to exceptions. So what that means is there may be exceptions from having to stay at home, for example, going to medical appointments or even working pre-approved periods of time, for example, maybe uh, midday to 5 p.m. or whatever it might be. So they can last for up to 18 months and of course, again, that is preferable to full-time prison custody. The seventh category of penalty is full-time prison custody. And of course, what that means is you go to jail and you stay in jail until your release date. Now, if you'd like to know which penalty you're most likely to get for your criminal offence, then you can come in and see one of our experienced lawyers for a free first appointment. You can ring us 24 hours a day, seven days a week on 9261